Thanks, William. Awesome. Well, welcome back to another Kicking Tables. Today we have Richard Davis with us, the creator of Amass, and it is coming to Kickstarter on August 10th, so everybody go check that out. The link is below in our description. Richard, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, tell us about Amass. What kind of game is this? Because it's actually, I think it's got a unique concept to it. Tell us about Amass. Okay, yeah, so um, Amass is a small game about fighting your friends uh, on an alien planet for the, uh, for the control of all the resources. So you play miners and you're all been sent out by your, um, by your bosses to try and collect the most valuable resources. And the idea is that you collect them and you store them in your base. And once somebody has filled their base with resources, the game stops and everyone adds up the total value of resources and whoever's got the highest is the winner and gets to leave the planet and they're the champion. Give us a brief overview of how that gameplay works because there's several steps in the actual yeah. gameplay. So give us an overview of how it all works. Yeah. So um, at the start of the game, you everybody has, it can be played from one to six player and everybody has a, a crew, a mining crew. So they have from eight to six guys, depending on how many players you've got. Um, and then you have a, a player mat where you can um, secretly choose where you want to send your miners. So a big part of the game is uh, hidden movement. So it's right. kind of got work and it's also got hidden movement that a, the first player will draw two resource cards and distribute the resources on the planet map um, at these various mines on the map. And different resources are worth different values. And the, first, and the first thing on the actual resource card is you have to move the alien raiders. Now, there's these alien raiders that move around the board clockwise and they hoover up any resources that are left over from any mining operations. As aliens so are wont to do, of course. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so you can't actually uh, ever get rid of these alien raiders or kill them, but you can actually attack their camp. Which is, a, which is a destination on the planet map to get extra resource cards that allow you to do um, special powers and things like that. Uh, so that's something you can do extra. So the first action you do in the game is you move the aliens around the map. And the aliens also stop any mining and they stop any raids, which is players fighting each other. Okay. So they can be a benefit and they can be a hindrance there. They can be a real benefit if your base is under attack and you can move the aliens to your base because then they'll stop anybody from attacking your base. So you can kind of use them to your advantage. Okay. Use and abuse them, that's what we say. So, um, so the alien raiders, so you move the alien raiders and then, and then everybody secretly behind their player screens chooses where they want to deploy all their crew. And then everybody reveals their player screens at the same time and then you all laugh at each other for making stupid decisions and things like that <laughs> and then you all distribute your guys to the planet map and then um, wherever there's uh, not enough resources for everybody to mine one resource then there's a fight so sometimes in a sometimes in a game there might not be any combat because there might only be if there's two resources at a mine and only two crew go there then they can take a resource each and there's no combat but okay. if, if there was one resource and two crew, then those crew would have to fight over that one resource. So, and then the combat is really, really simple. I mean, we played it loads uh, just recently at the UK Games Expo. We were there all weekend. Right. And we must have played it hundreds of times. And um, a lot of people said the combat reminded them of, of very much so of, um, of things like uh, Risk, that kind of, it's a very mm -hmm. simple dice combat system where okay. you, for each crew at your location, you roll a D6 and the results are paired up highest to highest, and the difference between the rolled numbers determines your place on a on this wound tracker. So there's like a okay. med bay on the actual board. So the difference between the dice results determines your position on the med bay. And then from that, the more damage you've taken, the more action cards you get. So there's these action cards which are a balancing mechanic in the game. So if your dice rolling sucks, which most people will say their dice rolling sucks. Oh, yes. They won't let themselves. They see a game with dice and they hate it already because they think they can just be rubbish. But in this game, the more you lose, the more action cards you get, which then allows you to do really funky effects okay. later on. So actually losing sometimes isn't so bad because you'll get action cards, which means you're definitely going to win next time. Oh, nice. Um, so, so, there, so there's that great balancing mechanic. And then, and then anybody in the wound tracker, 
at the end of the round. The wound tracker is divided up into sections and everybody moves up on the wound tracker. So each round, you're at the end of each round, you'll get some of your troops back. But basically, the wound tracker is like a delaying mechanism. So if you ha if you go out and have loads of fights and get loads of wounded, it just means in the next rounds, you're going to have less crew to distribute. But eventually, you will get them back. Right. So the, the game has a, an ebb and a flow of, in the first round, there'll be loads of combat because everyone's got a full crew and all the crews go out and they all have and there'll just be fights everywhere and then in the second round people will go like i've only got two crew left because <laughs> 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 they're all dead so suddenly the, then it becomes a bit more tactical about where you're going to mine and sure. do you want to get in another fight is it, is it going to be worth getting in another fight for that one resource maybe it's better to wait so uh, and then other people can obviously see how many people you've got in the wound tracker and they could think to themselves well actually i can see they're really weak this turn maybe i'm going to start attacking their base this turn because now i know they've got hardly any troops to defend it or and then uh, so yeah there's lots of little tactics like that that go on in the game and um and then another thing you can do is in the beginning everyone nobody will have any resources stored in their base and uh how you store the resources in your base also makes a difference because there's uh there's four facings to each base, so there's a north, uh, east, south, west facing, and um, and each base facing can only hold five resources. So you have like five resources in each section, and when a player is attacking your base, when another crew is attacking your base, they have to take resources from the outer edge of the base first. Okay. So basically, you've got inner base slots which are more valuable. And then people tend to use tactics of maybe putting the the lower value resources on the outside of their base first. Yep. So when somebody comes to attack their base, they have to take the worst resources first before they can take the big ones. And then also, if you if you make your base look pretty by by uh, putting the same coloured resources in the same slots, then you get extra points. But obviously, oh. you're making a kind of bigger target by putting grouping loads of types of resources together. So there's lots of little tactics like that. And uh, so in the beginning, when nobody's got any resources, nobody's attacking each other. But as the yeah. game goes on, the natural flow of the game is everybody starts mining, then everybody starts getting lots of resources, then everybody starts attacking each other because <laughs> it's way more lucrative to attack someone's base because you get to take the, all the re you get to take an amount of resources from their base rather than a smaller amount that's at a mine. So it's much more lucrative to um, to attack each other's base later on. So the game will suddenly go from being quite friendly to being way more hostile. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> So the the aesthetic of the game, the the theme itself. What was your inspiration um, behind that? Like, I love the space theme. It really reminds me a lot of sort of like eighties video game. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sort of thing. Um, what what was your inspiration for that? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're totally right. It is an eighties video game. You know, me. I, I was born in the seventies, so um, so I'm an eighties kid as well, <laughs> really. And um, I. How this game came to be is that I, I've been making this other game, which I'm shamefully plugging here, called Outbreak. <laughs> okay. And uh, I made that game, I designed that game like like five years ago. And that's when I started designing games. I, start, I started with that one. And it, and because of my inexperience in game design, I, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And the game was full of so much stuff. And the game, like, <laughs> it became... It became too big for its own good, really. And so, obviously, through playtesting, a lot of people said, oh, there's too much extra stuff that doesn't need to be in there. So I obviously took stuff out. But the game is still a really big game, and it's like a a, a, a game you can play for, like, three hours. You can you know, you know, can play it for a long, long time. It's a, it's a zombie survival game, and it takes a long time to play. There's lots of moving parts and loads of things you could do. So this time, uh, I was like, right, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to make the smallest game I can possibly make with the most simple rules and the most, like, uh, everything about it is simple. Simple components, simple combat, everything in it is just uh, a simplification of, of lots of other kind of types of games. So it's got lots of, as I say, it's kind of got, it's got hidden movement, it's got worker placement, it's got uh, dice rolling, it, but they're all, they're all very simple. And, and that's kind of what I wanted to do with the graphic design mm. as well, is that, I wanted the graphic design to match to match the gameplay, and actually the, the graphic design to be really simple. And then the the space theme was ov was obvious um, after I 
<laughs> originally this game originally a mass was actually a zombie game <laughs> oh wow really <laughs> it, originally it was a zombie game um I've, I've designed obviously i've designed outbreak and that's a zombie game and i was like i can't make another zombie game like <laughs> you become the zombie game guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i didn't want to get known as a zombie game guy um, even though obviously I adore zombies, like I love I love that thing, but I love sci-fi as well. And um, and the thing is like one of my favourite movies in Aliens, and I love yeah. all that sci-fi goodness. But um, but yeah, so it started out as as one type of game, and then and then through looking at uh, the graphic, through talking about the graphic design with people and stuff like that, as I say, I the the zombie theme has been done so much. And zombie games always tend to look the same. They're always kind of like dark and gritty and moody. So with, with, with Outbreak, I've made it all really colorful and bright. Yes. And so I was like, well, I can't just replicate what I've already done in another game because it will look like the same game. Right. So I was like, so I need to change the theme up. So suddenly I was like, well, what my other favorite thing is sci-fi. So that's, that's a good jumping off point. And then... And then I knew what I always wanted um, it to be blocky because I wanted cubes because I love okay. wooden cubes, like tactile wooden cubes. Yeah, that's I just great. Think, I think they're cute, and they're really fun to play with. And yeah. I don't know, there's something there's something like old old school board games. Oh, about yeah. All like Absolutely. Cubes. So I had um, so I had like little wooden spacemen and little wooden cubes. And then and then the theme of all this like chunkiness just bled out into the graphic design like right it's all going to be chunky retro graphics nice. and and that, and that's and that's where it's come from really yeah i mean i've been inspired by lots of other things you know what i mean yeah. but, um, but uh but that's graphic design you just get inspired by everything around you really i want to talk a bit about your your hidden actions mechanic because the hidden actions yeah. you actually have it behind a player screen uh, but that's actually your worker placement is what you're actually doing in there. What was your decision in making the worker placement piece hidden? What was the, yeah. what was the advantage there in the game to, to hide your, instead of just like a typical worker placement, you're placing things to in turn, right? Yeah. But you want all the players to actually do that at the same yeah, time, yeah. but hidden. What was the decision behind that? Yeah, I think uh, it was, I'd always wanted to, I like the kind of idea of um, of having these groups of people. I mean, the idea started out with, there was. I knew there was going to be a map and there was going to be this uh, kind of big, uh, mon there was going to be some kind of enemy moving around the map right. that was basically going to mess everything up for the other players. So that was the kind of idea. Was, there was going to be these players on a board and the idea was that they were going to have to um, either do do something or resolve something on the map, and there was going to be this thing that moved around the map, kind of uh, either they'd have to fight or it would stop them doing what they wanted to do. I think I'd, I think there was a few games that had come out that kind of had like a big bad guy or a big monster in, and I kind of really liked the idea of of a game with like a big bad guy, and then um, and then the kind of the bad guy in this actually kind of has been scaled down, and he's and he's not really so threatening, but it, um, but it, it definitely adds a really good um, twist to the, to the game to have this thing moving around blocking and it's really useful for action cards and to, to do all these special effects. So that's where I kind of started with this idea of something moving around this board. And then, and then obviously you need something for the players to do. And then <laughs> obviously then it was like, well, the players are going to be gathering all these resources and then taking them back to their base and defending their base. And a game where... And I had originally had an idea of, uh, as you say, of just having a player board where people would choose where they want to put their guys and then go and complete the actions on a board. But um, but it but it wasn't it it wasn't exciting enough. Okay. You know, it wasn't exciting enough for if for people to do actions and you can see what everybody else's action is going to be. For me, uh, I needed it to be. I needed the game to have some excitement. And from playing games like um, I'm trying to think of some now. But any game where you're, any game where you suddenly reveal your actions and you kind of get to laugh with what your friends have chosen to do, a game like um, oh, Space Alert or something like that, you know, where everybody's yeah. kind of so involved in what they're doing, and then when you look around, you're like, oh my god, you've done the wrong thing, you've done the wrong thing. But that kind of, that kind of fun. Yeah, uh, it also so creates. I think in a mass, it creates more conflict because 
yeah. that's that's where the conflict comes from is you both chosen the same location but maybe there's not yeah, enough resources now to go between you so you have to fight whereas but, if it was open i may choose yeah. not to go there because i've seen you go there right i don't want to fight you so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's right it's totally it, it makes everybody do combat but in a way i because there's a lot of people who don't really like take that games you know like take that fighting games and i know a lot yeah. of people don't really like those kind of games, and um, and I'm not a massive fan of take that games. And there is a, there is a certain amount of take that in this game because obviously you are fighting each other and all the time. But because of the actions are hidden, no one's actually kind of purposely picking on anybody. If you right. know what I mean? Because right. Yeah. A lot of the time you just reveal your actions and you That's just true. happen to have attack the, and you're like, oh, now we have to fight. Because originally I did think, well, I could make the game not aggressive at all and have it that when you go to a mine you um you could be like uh bidding mm. for the for the right to mine and not actually fighting you know you could just change the terminology and True. have it be a nice peaceful game but i don't want it to be a peaceful <laughs> game i like, fight. I like fight round I like one it. fight <laughs> yeah and, and obviously you get to attack each other's bases so that in that in that uh when you get to that kind of stage in the game you are you are purposely picking on people, but it's, True. it's it's kind of advantages to defending. It's more advantageous to defend slightly. And when uh, if more than one person attacks you, they have to fight each other first before they can attack your base. So um, so if you are if you have got lots of resources and everybody comes to attack you, they have to kill each other off first before they even get to you. So therefore you can kind of use your other crew to maybe go and do some more mining while everyone's trying to get your stuff and then maybe eventually get loads of resources and win anyway. So, uh, so yes, yeah, the game's really simple, but it's got loads of little tactics that people can employ that make it interesting. Nice. Nice. Cool. Um, talk to us a little bit about how this plays as a solo, uh, like how the solo mode would work. Cause you, you've talked about like, you know, a lot of the player versus player interaction. How does that translate yeah. in, in a solo mode? Yeah, so um, pr uh, predominantly this game is a multiplayer game. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's it more it shines. I feel like it shines more when it you know it's it's been designed as a multiplayer game. It's the yeah. kind of game you get together with a group of friends and sit down and laugh at each other and fight at each other and have fun. Um, but um, but I always, if I can in a game, I'd always want to try and put a solo mode because obviously it's so popular now and it's yeah. such a big thing that. There's no re I can't see any reason why if I could try if I could get one in why I wouldn't include it, and then the, uh, and then through just trying to make one some kind of happy accidents happened where I created an AI deck for the game um, that would automate other players, and then okay. uh, and then we found that this AI deck so if I was playing solo I can play against as many AI as I want up to six so right. I could up to five enemies okay. so I could play. You would die if you play against five enemies easily because they, um, they, that kind of increases the difficulty. You can play one-on-one -on -one against one AI, um, but I would kind of recommend that you play against two normally, and then if you played against three, it would kind of be on hard mode and then very hard and blah, blah, blah. But, um, but the AI like has a, a set way of operating, so you can kind of use that to your advantage, that knowledge of knowing kind of how the AI uh, distributes their crew and stuff, but you don't know where they're going to distribute their crew. So the, the happy accident came that playing two player, being able to add AI in made the game really way more fun, which as I say, was a complete accident that w I'd be playing with a friend of mine. We'd play one on one and then, and then we go, well, let's play with two AI. And then suddenly that changes the dynamic of the game because you've got other two other opponents that are doing their own thing. Right. And maybe they're at you and nicking all your stuff. And then half the time the AI will start winning and you'll be like, oh, hang about, We're, we've been fighting each other so much, we've heard what the AI are doing. And then the AI will like take over and then you'll all have to attack the AI because they'll be winning. And um, so it kind of added, added a lot to the game, really. So the, there, is a solo, there is a solo mode and it, and it definitely does work and the AI is actually, is actually really good. It, it works really well. Um, it's just, uh, as I say, it was more interesting for me that, that I found out that it's much better for for other numbers as well because you could play four player and still have an ai if you want if you want right. to fix it up kind of there's no reason and uh and it works and it works really well so, so you could kind of always play six player if you wanted to by just adding ai every time yeah uh, so yeah 
Yeah. yeah. So uh, with your with your Kickstarter, um, can you tease any of your stretch goals for us? Anything that you're you're looking to to add to the game, expansions or, or component upgrades? Yeah. Well, well, uh, because this is our first Kickstarter, we're not actually going to do any stretch goals. Okay. Be- only because, um, as I say, because it's our first one, and we're trying to you know find our feet with the whole Kickstarter world because yeah. it's it, when you've never done anything like that before. There's there's a lot there's a lot going on. We are going to, I hopefully am going to add, if it does well enough, we will add, um, I will add some stretch goals in, but they won't actually, but they're just going to be things I want to upgrade in the game anyway. Sure. So if the game, if the game does well, we're going to just add a bunch of free stuff. Like we want to upgrade the quality of the dice. We want to mm-hmm. use much better card stock. We want to use, uh, we, we've got an idea to deboss the board. So there's like the board at the moment, um, uh, we could deboss it so the resources could slot into the board. Nice. Um, and things like that. Um, so there is lots of nice stuff that we want to do, but we have to be realistic. We're just being realistic because it's our first yeah. one. But if we manage to fund, we'll be over the moon and we'll be and be brilliant. And if it funds well, then we'll just. I want to. I want the game to be the best when it comes out. Anyway, I, I don't right. want to release. You know, the half-assed version of the <laughs> game. I want to release the best version of the game. So if if there is anything. If we do add some stretch goals, they'll just be added for free, if you know what I mean, in updates. We'll just update right. to say, now we're going to upgrade this, now we're going to upgrade this. Nice. Um, and we're already aiming for a very good quality game anyway. It's not like we're getting it. It's not going to be very good. We're, we're aiming for high quality anyway, but it'll be I'll be able to make it even better, obviously. Awesome. That's the idea. Awesome. All right. So we are at the stage where we want to learn a little bit more about you as uh as a board gamer so we've got our lightning round questions i uh, just uh i think it's eight i can't remember if there's it's eight always, or nine now there's always eight there's always eight apparently i don't know how to count so we're <laughs> going to fire through these give the the top answer that comes to your to your mind okay okay you ready yes all right uh purchasing games local game store or online online there's no one there's no local game store around here unfortunately <laughs> i guess you're just gonna have to open one <laughs> Well, I mean, I would love to, but I think everybody wants to do. Everybody who's into games would love to have their own game store. That's true. Yeah, that's that true. is true. <laughs> All right, uh, game that you always win. Uh, there, there is a uh, descent, but that doesn't really count because it's a multi cover. <laughs> it's caught, but you, true. Could, you could lose to the you game. You can though, still so lose to the game. You're always beating the. Yeah, uh, descent's, I find descent's nice and easy. It's an easy game. All right. All right. Uh, dice or cards? Oh, um, at the moment I'd say cards. Okay, right. I'm really loving cards. We just we just restarted our Gloomhaven campaign that we that had been put to bed for about a year. Yeah, ours everything. too. Ours too. Yes, yeah. we just started that again, and obviously now we're all like reading, yeah, you know, things on the internet, trying to find out all the information we can and get back into it. So at the moment it's cards. I do love dice. At the moment, it's cards, I would say, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, competitive or cooperative? Uh, I probably play more co-op games. Or co-op? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's just more... My group's very, probably more... The group of friends that I normally play with are more casual gamers. Right. Um, if, uh, I've got another group of friends that's a bit more hardcore gamers that we play more competitive games with, but... Um, Probably more. I probably own more co-op games. I yeah, I love co-op games. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I do co-op. Yeah. Uh, favorite game mechanic. Uh, um. Favorite game mechanic. I think. I can't think. I know uh, what I think is really good is the um, that I always that I always hold up as being really good is the mechanic in Pandemic the cards. Mm. The way the deck is built in Pandemic and the way that you, you know, the whole way that deck kind of runs the game. Right. That little bit, that little bit of the game, even though the game's, you know, obviously quite old now, um, I still think that was a really good bit of design. Yeah. You know. Sort of, I don't even know what you would, would you call that, like sort of like the outbreak mechanic, right? Like, I guess, yeah. I don't even know what you'd call that mechanic. Well, let's call it the outbreak yeah. mechanic. That's it. Yeah, we, yeah. Right here, right now, we just defined it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I always thought that was it was clever when you first played. You're like, oh, that's really clever, and that that was a mechanic that I yeah. thought was good. Yeah. All right. Uh, the last game you played. 
Uh, Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven. <laughs> yeah, we played. Yeah. We, you know, we played a, like a three-hour session a few days ago. Nice, <laughs> nice. You know what those games are like. Oh <laughs> yes, these things are very long. <laughs> uh, what is your most recent game purchase? Um, uh, a, a Kickstarter turned up, which was uh, an expansion for Who Goes There. Okay, I can show. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who goes there? Expansion. Oh yeah, nice. Because yeah, I had the original version, so this was the upgrade. You just needed pack. the upgrade pack. I've got the original as well. I didn't get the upgrade pack though. Yeah, so I wanted to get the upgrade pack because uh, that's. Uh, I, I, as I say, the thing is one of my favorite movies. So yeah. if there's a if there's a thing type game, I'll own it. <laughs> nice. Grab that one. Nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, deck builder or deck constructor? Um. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Deck build, I think. A deck, const deck constructor, I think. Deck constructor think, yeah. would be things like Magic the Gathering. That's a constructor versus a deck builder like something like Dominion. Um, well, I guess it must be. Uh, what what would uh, terraforming Mars be classed as? That's more. Uh, a deck. That's uh, I guess sort of a deck constructor. Yeah, that's a bit, a bit of a deck builder. Yeah, yeah. Deck builder, yeah. Deck builder. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, I like that mechanic probably the most. All right. All right. Well, that's that's it for the lightning round. Like to get to know you outside your own game, but uh, uh, we are at the end of our episode. But uh, I want your final thoughts. Uh, what do you most want people to know about a mass, and why should they back this game? Well, if uh, a mass is is really simple to play. It's really simple to teach. Somebody can you can play you can play one round, and everyone will completely understand what's happening in the game, and they'll know what to do. Um, I think it's a really good opener game for a game night. You can play a game in uh, under an hour. Once once people have played it once, you can play it very fast. Okay. Um, it's really fun. There's lots of shouting at each other and laughing, and um, <laughs> it's just uh, it's just a really good t a really good fun game. And lots so of fighting. Got, a lot, lot of fighting. I'd say it's not really because of the hidden movement. It's not too aggressive. Right. Um, it's kind of, it's more kind of light-hearted, <laughs> light-hearted <laughs> aggression. Um, and we've got some live playthroughs coming out. And so when you get to see people play, you'll see how much fun they kind of have playing it. So uh, yeah, yeah. Back us on Kickstarter, please. Awesome. <laughs> yes, everybody, go check it out on Kickstarter. The link is in the description below. Click on that. Back a mass. You're gonna love it. Richard, thank you so much for joining us, and good luck with the rest of the campaign. Uh, thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure you subscribe to OMG Nexus. The link will be below. And make sure that you go and back a mass on Kickstarter.